Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi, how are you going? Okay, yeah, Frank, it's a pro- uh, pleasure to talk with you. Um, I've got several questions. I've been storing them up here for a few weeks. Um, uh, w- w- first thing I'd like to go to is your reference to the um, to the uh, the volumes of laws that we have here in, in the states and, and of course in other other territories. Also, it reminds me of a of a, a cartoon that my friend Mike Grady um, said he had seen, where there was a boxing ring. And, and the announcer was announcing the, the, the one opponent in one corner. He says, here in this corner is the United States Code, Statutes, Laws, Regulations, weighing in at umpteen hundred pounds. And versus yep. in the other other corner, off the corner, we have the King James Bible weighing in just a little bit over three pounds. Um, <laughs> uh, which brings me to the question is, is are you familiar with Mike Grady and his work, um, that of Puget Sound Ag- Agricultural Society, and what he has done and his documents are at the International Court of Justice at The Hague? No, I'm not. Uh, and I'm sorry that I'm okay. not. I mean, I'm, I'm limited. I'd like to know, but no, I'm, I'm not. His work is very much parallel with, with, with you. Matter of fact, when you mentioned keys tonight, I remember listening to a conference call he had, and he was emphasizing the keys because his is very much parallel with, with what you've done. You've gone further uh, past. Um, he basically has created the Ecclesiastical Society of Puget Sound, resurrecting, resurrecting an abandoned um, um, corporation uh, off a spinoff off of Hudson Bay Company. Uh, which was abandoned. Yeah. Um, so, um, but anyways, um, where do you draw? What what do you draw from when you're creating the um, the canons, the canon codes for for um, Eucadia? Yeah, good question. It, it 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 is a real composite of reading. I mean, whether it be Lord Blackstone's commentaries or Bacon's maxims of law or the works of Aristotle or Plato or, or the works even back to Akhenaten or any of the commentaries, even, even, even the Codex Justinian or the Codex uh, um, Civilis, Corpus Civilis, no matter what kind of areas it is or Thomas Aquinas, uh, really these relate to the philosophy of law uh, and can't contain within them certain maxims, certain assertions. So what I've try very much to do is absorb all that's been written and and really try and distinguish between those jewels. Everything has an essence of truth and try and understand the essence of truth that they're dealing with so that that is reflected and that the canons themselves don't suffer a fatal flaw of missing. And uh, I hope that makes sense. But that's kind of it. So it's it's kind of like loading your head up like a computer with, with thousands and thousands and thousands of pages and knowledge and then meditating on it to sort of work your way through it. It's, it's, a, it's a messy process <laughs> and it takes, it okay, takes time. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I was basically wondering if you were drawn from the Roman, from the Roman canon laws and you were drawn from the, the parallel with, with what they have uh, and, their, and their laws. Some of it, some of it, but not okay. all of it. Um, yeah. Would would the canon? Would you consider that the canons, Roman canon laws, would the canons be basically a codify, codifying of of the holy holy books? They would argue it is, and what they would argue is that uh, that effectively the canons are an extract of law derived from scripture so scripture is the sort of per- the perfection or the beatification of the of the maxims even though it's kind of the right. other way around yeah so they would argue that's it but then, but then you've got you know the question of uh, them putting emphasis on certain words and those words not being present in earlier versions of uh, scripture so it's 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 on shaky ground. Okay, yeah, I I, I was going to say scripture, but I I would say that they probably refer to them as the holy books and stuff. Would the apocrypha 
be part of the canon, uh, part of the Roman canon law? Mm, well, okay. Some of their most powerful customs are off ledger, if I use that to to describe. And what I mean is, uh, a number of popes were accused and I see no reason to doubt this, were accused of being the authors of the grimoires. You've heard of grimoires? Excuse me? The grimoire. Have you heard of... Sorry, my accent might, might make it sound different. Grimoires are the, are, is the name ascribed to the very worst books of black magic. No, I'm not familiar with that. And plus, I get a little bit of a, a hollow echo sound for, from your... From your side, so it's hard for me to hear. Okay, well, again, that's pro- probably my fault. But uh, anyway, I say that these are off ledger, and they are off ledger. But we're referring to the occult, so uh, it's a very perceptive question that the the way in which the canons are worded are very, very carefully worded to effectively say that anything that was promulgated as a papal bull, anything that is uh, in their arsenal, like some of this alcohol, can all be regarded as part of the body of law, even though they don't explicitly include it in their canons. Now, to me, that is a corruption. That's a bit like leaving a, a wide open door and saying, oh, if I haven't thought of something, let me come back and I'll fill it in. I mean, that to me is not law. That's that's control. That's a system of control, not a system of law. Right. I understand. I agree with you. Okay. okay. So if we can agree that if we agree that the canons um, come from scriptures, um, in in reading, well, I'm they're, reading. They're canons. Um, they're canons. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, in your neo, how do you say this? Neo, neo field. Neophytes, how do you say that? Um, Neophytes. The concepts, the basic concepts. Yes, you you um, have in here a uh, claim of right. Um, have you defined what the claim, because this is a big term, a term that's being used a lot in Canada um, for exercising people's, um, you know, inalienable rights of whatever. Um, have you defined anywhere what, what the uh, claim of right would be? Um, have you? Cause it says can you, I ask a question? Yeah, can I? And I'll answer that by asking you a question, if I could. Have you had a chance to read the canons of positive law from start to end, as they are? No, I'm not. I have not had the chance to dive into them. I'm still working on reading a lot of the other stuff yet. Okay. So no, I have not. I understand what you're saying. I understand that you know this is where the claim of right comes from. Yes. Yeah, because um, I'm just also, saying that this. Is no, it's a good question. It's a good question. So I'm not. Don't feel I'm. I'm being negative. It's just a. It's a good question. But this. I'm. I'm answering you in the in the best way. And that is, uh, when you read the canons of positive law, and in particular when you read the background on what is ecclesiastical deed, deeds and deed polls, then you will know the answer to your question. Right. Right. Um, that. That's. Basically, I, I had that answer. I knew the answer anyways. Um, but I was trying to lead up to another section, another thing here. Um, by asking that question, uh, in, in the Ecclesiastical Depot's um, concept, you mentioned and you talk about symbolism and that. Um, one thing I've been, I've been seeing a lot of or happened to come to my attention is the symbolism of, well, the scriptures, in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, they talk about, and again, today you were just talking about the armor, and this is about putting on the armor of God, um, yep. which is symbolism. Um, we, see, we see that the, the, um, the strong arms of the court systems, they have a shield. Yep. Would you consider the shield that they carry part of the symbolism of the, of the Roman law, and this maybe could be something that we, uh, of the Eucadia, should be perhaps incorporating as a shield um, that we can use? Well, that's a good question. Uh, remember, okay. I get in trouble all the time because of, of a lot of the symbolism. 
as you as you probably know. I mean, I don't think we're short on symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. but, well, the thing is, that I see a lot of detectives. You see detective shows, and they, all they seem to do is be able to flash the shield, and they can get and they get a free, free, free pass to go. Um, so yeah, therefore, absolutely. I'm thinking of the symbolism, and and then also, you know, armor of God that we too should have a shield that we can then uh, produce and and have a a free, free, you know, pass. A free pass. Well, now. yes, and and just to to point out, and and if you don't mind, I. I can we hold any more questions you've got? Because I hope I've answered. Uh, that's, um, not, that's about it. I only had one more, okay, but, and that would have been. Okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, this has to do with um, with going back to the claim of right. Um, and, and the scripture talks about it in, in Luke 22 and verses 35 to something. And yep. it says Jesus told told the disciples then to go and sell their garments and to uh, get themselves a, a sword. Though yep. I don't understand the purpose of that he would tell them to get a sword and what the purpose of to sell their garments to have a sword, to me, I would think that this would be something of a protection type of thing for themselves. Uh, so would you say that a claim of right under a we'll say ecclesiastical um, maxim or, or, or concept would be that of be able to protect ourselves um, from in the claim of right of from harm. Well, you know, yes, us from yes, any ab- of the... absolutely, and it, and it comes down to this. And I'm glad you did ask that last question. And I'm, I'm sure as you had take the time to read positive canons and uh, more detail in ecclesiastical that a lot more questions that you might have will be answered. But let me wrap up. Firstly, thank you for your questions. And what you find is that the spiritual side cannot act without consent when it comes to assistance. I know that sounds frustrating, but if you won't help yourself, then who can help you? Yes? Right. So what is a claim of right, ultimately? Yeah? If I give you three talents and you go and stick them in the ground, then what does that mean in your behaviour to me? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you say, stick in the ground. If I give you three talents and you then go and put them in the ground, then what does that mean? What does that signify? Talents, you said? Talents? Talents. Well, Money? Talent, skill. If, if, if you're given abilities, if you can speak, right. write, read, if you can make a trade, if you can build things, then and then you do nothing. You are in depression. You, you sit at home rotting because... You, you see that no one will, quote, unquote, give you a job in their system, you won't work with your neighbours, then what can the divine do if you won't act? Right. Well, it's like if he gave us these talents, then we're to use those talents. And if we don't, it's like, it's like you know, putting it under an old song, uh, this little light of mine, um, I'm going to put it, not put it under a bushel. Yep. Well, there you go. So good luck with the reading, and thank you for your questions. Okay, thank and you. always feel free to ask any question you like. Thanks again. All right, thank you, Frank. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, wonderful. <clears throat> thank you for those questions, and thank you, Frank, for uh, taking on those series of questions. Um, we have another phone line uh, question here. Two matters to me. Are you there? Hello. Hi, Terry Lynn and, and Frank. This is Greg. Oh, hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. hi. I, uh, I call in to ask a couple questions, and before I, I want to throw in one thing really quick to our most recent caller, um, and I would just suggest that he also look at your website, one hyphen faith hyphen of God, or we yeah, one one faith of God dot org with hyphens in between each word, and um, I think that would really help. 